Blog Talk Radio. Namaste and welcome to N5D Radio coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and 12 a.m. midnight in the UK. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, and for the next two hours we're going to be raising the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Tonight, our special guest will be contactee George Cavasilis. But first, I'd like to bring in my co-host coming to you from Ocala, Florida, licensed massage therapist, energy worker, and artist, Kendra Gilbert. Hi, Kendra. Hey, Greg. How's it going? I am going. (laughs) How are you doing? We're doing good. Going well over here, too. Excellent. Excellent. What's going on in the news? Well, in tonight's news, of course, the Internet went a buzzing last night following the ritualistic propaganda performances from the VMA Music Awards. Filled with symbolic Im- imagery and references to everything from demons, sex, pedophilia, the misuse of the single eye, to the ever-popular 666 hand gestures, but is simply turning off the TV enough? You know, the main target of these mind control experts are obviously the youth, so how do we really help break the spell when these influences are literally everywhere? And are you sure you're not one of the ones supporting the agenda without even realizing it? In other news, as we close in on September 1st, we are now at the threshold of whistleblower Patty Broussard's apocalyptic prophetic certainty that she claims is to happen anywhere between today and the end of this month. As always, using discernment is critical when entertaining any of the many possible outcomes of our future here on this planet, and it certainly never pays off to fall for fear-mongering. You can always find the latest and alternative news coverage on the N5D.com website under the news link at the top. And back to you, Greg. Okay. Well, you know, my discernment tells me that she's full of BS because, (laughs) you know, if if there was this uh, many solar system heading towards us, we would have seen these repercussions at at least 20 years ago from this huge, massive thing. So I I just think it's all a bunch of fear, propaganda BS. Mm -hmm. One man's opinion. (laughs) We can ask George about it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so just a reminder, N5D.com will be hosting our first annual Return to Atlantis conference here in Sarasota, Florida, on the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Lido Key Beach on the weekend of October 4th through October 6th, 2013. We have six amazing speakers lined up, including Lisa Renee, Till Scott, Laura Eisenhower, Dr. Dream, last Monday's guest, astrologer Tom K. Pacha Lesher, and galactic historian Andrew Bartis. And just a reminder, Andrew will be coming back to N5D Radio in the next few upcoming weeks, so stay tuned to that. Included in this amazing event is a Friday night new moon beach activation, a Saturday night cosmic reunion beach party catered by Earth Origins and their amazing organic food. And on Sunday, Sunday night, we're all going to meet at the Siesta Key Drum Circle. Our speakers will be featured from late morning until mid-afternoon, so that leaves everyone plenty of time to go sightseeing or simply enjoy the 99% quartz crystal sands here on Sarasota's Gulf Shores. Now, due to seating limitations, there are only 90 tickets available, and they are going quickly to this event. So you can find out more information about this uh, return to Atlantis conference by visiting www.n5devents.com or click the link below this video. And you can also watch it on live stream. I'll throw that in there too. So I believe we have George uh, with us already. Uh, would you like, like to introduce him? Sure. It would be my pleasure. All right. Well, our guest tonight is an author, acclaimed speaker, and he's no stranger to alternative radio interviews, a man with an extraordinary life story, which includes hundreds of interactions with both benevolent and malevolent beings, and shares his experiences with conscious spirit and the dimensions of our universe. Tonight, he will be talking about what he has discovered to be, you know, what life in this universe is all about. It's a great pr- privilege to welcome George Cavasilis to N5D Radio. Hello, George, and welcome to the show. 
Hello, Hi, Kim George. And hello, Are... Greg. Hello. How are you? Hi, George. It's, it's, it's been a while. How are you doing? Uh, it's been a while, and I really, really feel great and very privileged and honored to have been invited back onto your show. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. Me too. I, I, I wish I had this radio show on for the last three years because I would have had you on a lot more. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's exciting when, times when on the, last, the planet at the moment, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Um, speaking of which, when was the last time you spoke to your galactic family, and is there anything really big that's coming up? Well, it's a, it's a communication that is always there, and uh, it, it ebbs and flows. And it has to do, it, it, I'm kind of not doing it in the manner, in the conventional understanding of when people are continually getting picked up and, uh, and taken on board craft. It, it's not like that. My communication is through my heart, soul, essence. And there are several um, groups that I'll communicate <clears throat> using telepathy as well. Um, there are unsavory groups that still give me a bit of a hard time and I communicate with them telepathically. Um, when need be, when I need to, you know, communicate, give them a message, um, and, and tell them exactly what I uh, think of them, and, and what their tactics are. And so there's various communications taking place um, all the time. It, it's like a, a constant state of being, and you know, there's days where I just switch off from it because I'm not, you know, just I'll just sit down and watch a movie and just take a break from it all. But usually, it's a constant state of being. Who are some of these malevolent races that you're speaking of, and which ones are helping to facilitate this awakening? Yeah, every, every interaction that's taking place is helping to facilitate our awakening. So this is, this is the interesting um, factor, when we can actually go beyond the dualistic drama and get into that place where we understand that all the negativity that's being imposed on humanity are programs that we wanted um, to be implemented upon us because they challenge us and then we grow from that mm -hmm. challenge. So it is, uh, the, the, when we can look at the bigger picture of it all, we can actually realise that they're role playing and uh, we, we tend to not get drawn into the drama as much and we tend to focus more on our growth and, um, and we transcend that drama vortex. Uh, it's, it's a really empowering place to be when we can do that and it even takes us into a place of appreciation and love and gratitude for the challenges for the negativity that's been imposed upon us now that's that's really challenging for a lot of people to go into that place because it depends on the level of your interaction and the level of your experience um, I personally have been there uh, am there and I've been through some horrific experiences and I've had to go really deep into my beingness, into that place in my heart to find my place of wisdom, to find my, my greater beingness where I can actually embrace those beings and be grateful for the pain and the suffering and the misery they imposed upon me so that I may transcend those experiences and become a much more powerful and wiser being as a result because prior to having those experiences, I, I, I wasn't as powerful and as all-knowing as you are after the experience because you never really know until you walk in those shoes. So it really helps us to get out of that game of pain and blame. I call it the merry-go-round of pain and blame and, and the game of pain and blame. And we realize that in the higher realms, like in the 5D, for example, we are actually brothers and sisters with all these beings. Nobody's in opposition to one another. We are all together um, on equal footing, and we are all in a place of unconditional love. So it's a, it's a slightly different approach to all the drama uh, that's ensuing on the planet, and with our awareness and our understanding of life being caught up in that drama. So, um, yeah, with... Um, when it comes to the different races, uh, we've got quite, quite an in interesting uh, scenario happening here at the moment because we've got the old guard that was allowed to come and be put into place here to manage um, and, and farm humanity, for want of a better term, because now I'm going to comment of... My commentary will now be from back within the drama of this whole scenario here. 
Um, and they were managing us and farming us in, in a particular manner. Now the next level of the hierarchy is imposing itself. It has been for some time. And we are about to see with these new laws coming in from the Vatican, which are going to be implemented on the 1st of September, we're going to start to see a really dramatic change on the planet to do with um, the old guard um, now being surplus to requirements and will now be pretty much, for want of a better term, disposed and even hunted down by this new guard and will be, because the, the new guard has to be seen to be doing good in the world, so they will really target the old guard and make them out to be the bad guys. So we've got a, a case of bad cop, good cop going on. Very interesting. George, um, you know, I did read your biography and um, read that you were, um, you went through an, a, a, a lot and you actually were exploited by these malevolent beings as a child and then as you got older you were contacted by the Galactic Federation of Light. Um, and it was, you know, again, a manipulation um, by those beings. Can you, can you explain how they were able to gain your trust? And when did you first begin realizing that you were being used? Oh, great question. Uh, yeah, the way they gain your trust is when we are in a place of despair or when we are in a place of um, unworthiness within ourselves, which is really what the overwhelming majority of the population of Earth has going on, um, we are really like putty in their hands and so they make us feel important in, in terms of their agenda and that we're special in terms of their agenda and that they then give us a mission because we, we, because we lack the inner love within ourselves individually, we tend to want to belong to something, we belong to a group, to an organisation, to you know, a, a cosmic gang, if you want to put it that way. And it, we then, um, it is, what, what it appeals to is not just the earthly ego, but what it appeals to is our cosmic ego. And a lot of people don't bring that into consideration in the equation here. We tend to think of our, just our human aspect, and then there's all these ETs out there that are far in advance and more powerful and closer to God than what we are, and that's just totally not the case. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that we, um, you know, that we lack something within ourselves. And the only, the only thing going on in reality is the, um, the concept or the, the program that has been implemented in our human psyche that we lack. Um, but we don't lack. We just think that we lack. We've been coerced into thinking that we lack within ourselves. Um, but the truth is we have more than you can ever imagine within ourselves and that a lot of these extraterrestrial races are absolutely terrified of us and what we're capable of um, because we are accessing more life force than they will ever do as an extraterrestrial race. And um, so there, there's, a, there's a great agenda at hand to continue to propagate the idea that we are lesser than they are, that we are lower than they are, that we um, squabble and fight amongst ourselves and we kill each other and we're greedy and we're just a bunch of sinners and all that sort of baloney. Um, and that is being pro propagated by the extraterrestrial cabals and intergalactic cabals. That is an, a notion and an idea and the systems that have been put into place on the planet propagate this idea, they promote it, they coerce us into behaving this way and, uh, and we've allowed it to happen and now it's really important for us to snap out of that trance and realise that we are so much more than we've been led to believe and that we really, really are um, very powerful beings within our own rights and when we can do that we, we, we really turn the tables. And, and so when they prey on that insecurity that we currently have within our psyche we tend to fall into this place of belonging once again um, and that void that's within us um, gets, the, you know, that, that apparent void that is within us because um, it is an apparent one, it's not a real one. Um, it, it, it fills that apparent void and so we get this new identity, we begin to identify ourselves through these 
extraterrestrial groups through these missions of doing good for humanity and, and working with their light, you know, the light that they bring, that they propagate. That's a really critical understanding right there. And, and the spiritual doctrines and practices that they bring to this world. You see, each extraterrestrial race has its own hierarchy within its own race. Um, they have their own cultural philosophies. They have their own spiritual practices and doctrines. And what we have is a massive conglomerate of extraterrestrial races that have been assimilated into a particular paradigm within the universe, into a particular way of life. And within this overall culture, they have their own spiritual practices. They have, they have their own spiritual hierarchies. And, and that is what we have been exposed to over the last few thousand years on the planet. And this is why I speak up in the way that I do, because it's really important for humanity to understand what's, what's really going on here. Um, because within us, we have access to energies and consciousness and state of being within this universe, which is far beyond the capabilities of these extraterrestrial groups of these interdimensional beings that are in you know that are all aligned with this particular uh, light energies these light energies and these light frequencies that that this multi-dimensional and intergalactic um, cabal uh, belong to makes a lot of sense uh, and I'm sure you're probably aware of others out there in the metaphysical community that are also being exploited exploited by some of these same beings and you know for these same purposes um, not asking for any names of course but have you tried to approach anybody um, out there that you know and or warning them um, of, of, I mean are you able to identify uh, the ones that took advantage of you are you able to do you really know who they are or do they have this ability to just mask themselves at will um, they do have an ability to mask themselves but when we function from our heart soul essence um, deep within us and and this is the really confronting part for many people to comprehend because when I talk about the spiritual practices and doctrines that they have uh, implemented on the planet over the, the last mostly 6,000 years it goes beyond that but really intensely for the last 6,000 years um, it you know I've, got, I've just got to come out straight out and say it and this is where I become controversial and you know, when we look at the spiritual practices and doctrines that are really being disseminated on the planet, prolifically disseminated on the planet right now, you've, you've got to start asking the question, why at the point in time when our planet's in the process of being sequestered by this group, by these entities and these beings, that there are specific um, spiritual practices that are just being proliferated around the planet right now? So these are the really hard questions. We need to be really honest with ourselves. And mm -hmm. what I'm referring to is chakra, kundalini, pineal combination. And mm -hmm. when we begin to experience ourselves beyond that program, and I've called it out, I've written about it in my book, and that's why people say, well, George, you're a disinformation agent, you're just a liar, you're a fraud, you're a... I get it all the time, right? I get, you know, I'm charlatan, I'm, all, I'm this or that and the other, I'm Satan, I'm... <laughs> you know, you get it all when you really expose what's really going on in this world. Um, but when we really look at it objectively, like, you know, because it is a religion, it is a religious practice, I mean, the, you know, the, the chakras are the seven seals in Christianity, you know, the, the Kundalini is the Holy Ghost in Christianity, the pineal gland is, you know, the big pine cone outside the Vatican and the, the, the peacocks are the opening of the seventh seal and it's, it's achieving a version of enlightenment. So when we actually look at this all objectively um, and we understand that, hang on a minute, you know, aren't these the spiritual practices of the ruling elite from, ruling elite from the ancient past? So all of a sudden there's all these people in the world that are engaging in those spiritual practices of the ruling elite. And who are the ruling elite been in communication with? And why are all of a sudden the masses allowed to be involved in the same spiritual practices? You know, it's, there's much more going on in this world 
than most of us realise. And if we can take a step back from that and talk to people who are experiencing life beyond this program of chakras, kundalini, pineal combination, because those are three components of a particular version of enlightenment. And so when we experience ourselves deeper inside of ourselves, which is the levels of self beneath the, the layers of the chakra system, when we experience our tree of life without kundalini, the, when I say tree of life, the physical manifestation of our tree of life is the central nervous system. So when you uh, take into consideration about uh, Eve and the serpent, when you take into consideration about this serpent that has infested the tree of life, when we understand the machinations of that relationship, when we understand that Eve is not someone evil, that there was an agreement put into place to allow our trees of life to become infested by this particular type of serpent energy. I'm not referring to the great serpent, when, you know, Quetzalcoatl, the rainbow serpent in Australian Aboriginal law. I'm not, I'm not referring to that type of serpent. The serpent that has infested our tree of life is a different kind of serpent. And when we can learn how to distinguish between the two, there's a, a really great awakening that takes place. It's like a massive real moment of realisation and revelation that, you know, like I said, we earlier on, I said we have allowed these energies to come and challenge us in this way. Well, it's the same thing. We have, you know, in our design of our travel through this, this universal matrix, through this um, what I call the great arena and the great cosmic arena, it was always designed that we would allow for our tree of life to be infiltrated by this serpent energy to provide programs and challenges for us. Um, and that's how we grow in this universe. You know, that is, this is what light yields. It's through adversity we prosper in, in these lower domains of the universe. And when we can embrace that, all of this is by design, by our design. And we have contracted these beings to role play for us. Then you know what that does? That takes us out of victimhood. That takes us out of the game of pain and blame. And then, you know, you go into places like, okay, I've got a little saying. It's not original sin. It's original intent. Own it, you know. So we go into this place of owning our lives. We take ownership for our existence. We take responsibility for our existence, you know. And we just stop getting drawn into these drama vortexes and playing the victim all the time. So it puts us into an incredible place of empowerment. And we get to see the dynamics of the game. We get to see, you know, the, the role that chakras are playing. We get to see the role that Kundalini is playing. We get to see that, that what the pineal gland is. And it's not what people think it is. It's, it's, it takes you into mind enlightenment. The pineal gland is in your head. You know, so that's a mind enlightenment. When you go beneath those programs and you go within yourself, you go into this single energetic center within your own beingness, which is residing, it's, it's there in all of us, beneath all the layers of those programs. And then that's where home is. It is deeply within ourselves and we realize who we are in there, who we are within ourselves. We realize that that is the pathway home. And, you know, the kingdom of heaven is within. You know, we, when we go deep within ourselves, that is the part of us that is connected to everything. That is the part of us that is the, 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 the part of us that knows all and sees all. Our true third eye or our true eye of God, whatever labels you want to use, is our heart soul essence. It's in our heart. It's not in our head. So the energetic center is from the heart, as a lot of people say, because it does generate more power and electricity than the brain. It is. It truly is. The heart is the, the, if you want a physical location, it's in your heart. You know, and, and energetically speaking, for me, I experience energetically not the physical location of the heart in the body, whereas, yes, that's a really big place, but I experience it sort of like in the middle of my chest. You know, uh -huh. and that's, for me, where I experience that, that, single because we're going back to singularity 
you know, we're ending the fragmentation. You know, chakras are a fragmented state of being. Um, and when we can go beyond that fragmented state of being and go back into ourselves, um, then that's when we find the, the knowledge of life. We find the wisdom of life. And, and we go into this sense of grace. We, we, we really become this graceful beingness which is living in the place of unconditional love and a place that's in harmony with everything. We get to feel the flow. It's like all of a sudden you just feel this flow of energy around you. You see the flow of energy. You see instead of thinking intellectually about where a person is headed, you feel where a person is headed. You understand their current circumstances. You understand where, the, where their river of life is flowing. And you begin to see the tapestry of flowing energy around you. You experience the tapestry of flowing energy around you. And the way life is interacting, everything is interacting with everything. Everything's connected to everything. And every, it just becomes one big flow of energy. And your whole experience changes. And your desire to be authentic, authentically you, you know, this, this is what I, I'm, I'm propagating, I'm promoting in this world is self-empowerment for people. It's spirit, spiritual divine sovereignty, you know, autonomy, where we no longer give our power away to, to programs and beings and entities outside of ourselves. Yes, yeah, chakras are, you can, can, you know, physically you can say they're located in our energetic systems, but they've been implanted in our energetic systems. They're not part of our organic makeup. They're part of the current human energetic makeup, but they're not part of our organic natural makeup. You know, they've been placed there. And when we can understand that about these energetic systems, we can move beyond all the influences and all these dramas and all these spiritual practices that have been, you know, these extraterrestrial interdimensional races are like the modern day version of your, of your missionaries. They're cosmic missionaries that come knocking on planetary doors. And, and this is how they prepare the planetary population, by alluring the planetary populations into these programs before their God presents itself to that planetary population. This is, this is what I'm really discussing here. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned earlier that some races are terrified of, of us and what we're capable of. Does this have anything to do with our DNA or a possible DNA upgrade? And what is it that makes us so powerful? Yeah, um, we are currently metamorphosizing and transcending our DNA. So we're not going, uh, well, I'll speak on my behalf, okay, because people are going in different directions and I'm not going to tell anybody what to do, but I'm certainly going to explain my journey and how I understand things to be and then people can make up their own mind and go wherever they like. Um, I'm not interested in reactivating my multiple strands of DNA because I've come from that place. I've been on a road to compression. When we understand the makeup of the galaxy, when we understand the makeup of the solar system and why these realities are so dense, the, the, the reason they're dense is because they're fractals. It, it, it's not because we're at the bottom of the universe and we are the lowest of the lows. That's just an outright lie. I'm going to call it for what it is. That is an outright lie. And the, we are in the galactic womb of the Divine Mother, the, like the feminine expression of the universe. This galaxy is the galactic womb. And this galaxy is a fractal of the entire universe. Every star system in this galaxy is a fractal of a galaxy. That's how this galaxy was created. So you take a, a galactic reality and you take all the wisdom that has ever been learnt from all the experiences of all the star systems, the planetary systems, all the different races incarnate in all these different planetary systems, all the interactions, everything that has ever taken place in the galactic reality, and you compress it and you turn it into a star system. You take a fractal of it and you insert it into this galaxy. Then you take another galaxy and you turn that into a star system and you insert that dense reality into this galaxy. And so this galaxy is made up of star systems which are fractals of galactic realities. And that's where the density comes from. And then you take that whole galactic environment 
and you represent that again into a single star system, which is our solar system. And then you take that solar system, which is a fractal of the galaxy, which that galaxy is a fractal of the universe, you know, and then you turn it into a planetary system, which is our planet. And then you take that planetary system, which is a fractal of the sun being a fractal of the galaxy being a fractal of the universe, right? So what I'm saying is our solar system is a fractal of the universe. Then you turn that into a planet. And then you take a single life form and you turn that planetary life form into a single embodiment, which is our human form. And therefore, we are fractals of the universe. We are walking universes, our bodies. And that's why we access more life force than any other race in the universe. And the reason we do that and the reason why we've been created in this way was for us to find a pathway back home. It's about integration. It's about taking all our fragmented aspects throughout the universe and bringing them all back into a single experiential arena, one single life form, one single embodiment, and bring it all back home. And this is who we are. This is what we're doing. And from the very beginning that this project was started to be created, there were beings that were insanely jealous when, you know, before this galaxy was created, that they were going to do everything in their power. They vowed that they would do that, to stop it, to sabotage it, to do everything they possibly could. And that's where it was all started from. That's where the setup was. And from then on, it's been a war of attrition, you could say, for us who have been managing this road to compression, this, this pathway back into integrated zero point, where we get to turn inside out and become all the sum of all our experiences and all our co-creations in the universe. It's been a magnificent battle, you could say, of epic proportions. And here we are right at the very end of it. We're on the precipice now of turning inside out and birthing um, into what we've always wanted to do and that, you know, achieve our intended outcome from the very beginning. And that's to be a single expression of the sum total of all our experiences and creations in this universe. It, it's, it's very exciting times we're living in right now, extremely exciting. Um, we do have someone in the chat room, Gemini Moon is um, actually wanting to know if you can um, clarify, is this in a, a, a compression then instead of an ascension process? It's more of a compression or compress, compressing I, yeah, action? If I, to, yeah, if I was to define it, I would say compression and incension because we, hmm. we're, we're kind of ascending but within us, inside of us. And when we raise our vibration, you know, because our outer world is a reflection of our inner world. So when we go inward and turn, you know, effectively inside out to reflect out, and so our outer world does become a reflection of our inner world. You know, when we express ourselves authentically, genuinely, from our soul light, I call it soul expression, you know, bring your soul light out from within you. Be you. Be as much as you as you possibly can be. That is the medicine. That is the remedy. This is what Mother Earth is waiting for. It's funny because we're waiting for her, but she's also waiting for us. And we can realize it's a symbiotic process. And she's really waiting for us to stand in our power, to kick in the gear and go, hey, <laughs> you know, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We're the gods of the ancient world. We're our ancestors from the past that built those pyramids and did all that. We're all back here now. We've played all these amazing dramas. We're the ones that are, were involved in all those Star Wars sagas, you know, and the war in, in the Orion system, which is one of the greatest battles that ever ensued in the universe. You know, we, we were all part of that. We've done all that. We've been 12-strand DNA. We've been 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 strand DNA beings. Now we're bringing it right back to zero point where we take the last two strands, which are a fractal of everything that we've been and done before, and we blend them into one. See, mm -hmm. I'm not... If you, the, the other programs are trying to lure you back into the cosmic arena. They're trying to lure you away from achieving zero point. They're trying to say, oh... You know, become a godly being, got to reactivate your 12 strands of DNA and this is what you were and you need to be that again. And not for me. I'm not interested in going back into the cosmic arena, back into the universal matrix. I'm in the process of leaving it. 
I'm achieving my intended outcome. This is closure for me. I'm reaching the end of that journey through the matrix. And you know, I'm not just talking the earthly matrix, I'm talking cosmic matrix and universal matrix. You know, and for me to do that, I have to go into zero point and, and blend everything back into an integrated state of being in the, in the balance and harmony within myself. So I'm not interested in reactivating DNA strands because I've already done that. I've been that. Mm -hmm. For me, that's, that's going backwards. It does make sense also when you talk about the compressing inward or the incension um, process versus the ascension process. And for those out there who are still trying to maybe um, decode the, um, the Bible because, uh, you know, or to, to kind of understand what it's saying, you know, when Christ talks about going within, that the kingdom of heaven is within, that also makes a lot of sense too about going inward, inward um, toward, you know, the inner, our, our you know, just within ourselves. Um, now, George, I have a question. Now, when we incarnate here on Earth, is it your understanding, uh, or what is exactly your understanding of where we're actually coming from? Is are are you? Do you subscribe to the theory that you know we're all we all come from the source, or are we coming from um, a galactic family? Are we coming from another planet? What exactly do you feel happens when we incarnate here on this planet? Where are we coming from? Yeah, we well, all of the from? above. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's, it's all of the above, mm -hmm. yeah. And when we look at this path to compression that we've been on, um, the majority of us incarnate on Earth, well, everybody's an extraterrestrial, let's just put it that way, because we've all come from away from the Earth to come and incarnate into the Earth plane. And even if you've been incarnating here, and you're a part of the you know, um, natural environment and you've incarnated from the nature kingdom, which a lot of people have as well. Um, there's a, a multitude of aquatic races on the planet in our oceans that live in other frequencies and dimensions we can't see. And there's quite a few of those people that are incarnating the human form. Um, you know, we've come from everywhere because right now this is the most important thing going on in the universe. Um, the, for me, I have three main energetic aspects of me that create this incarnational me right now. And there's an aspect of me from Cirrus, there's an aspect of me from Orion, there's an aspect of me from the Pleiades. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a composite of three that, that I'm consciously aware of and there's more, there's more than that, okay, than just those three aspects of me. But we are, um, a lot of people what we get fooled into thinking is that we are human and then there's this really high-end spiritual source aspect of us and that's it, that there's nothing else. And that mm -hmm. the stars and everything is God's creation and it's a big playground and we just get to play in it. It's not quite like that. Um, the reality that I've discovered and the reality that I know is, you know, through my, through my um, experiences and my travels, is that all those stars out there are us. All those galaxies out there are us. All those planets out there are us. All those other races out there are us. You see, mm -hmm. when we travel through the universal matrix, the, the way the creator of this universe works is it's a co-creative participatory process. So in order to understand how to be a creator of light, we need to live every aspect of light in every expression. All the good, the wonderful, the magnificent, the loving, the caring, and all the bad, the ugly, the evil, the manipulative, the deceitful, we need to live everything that this universe has to offer. Because if you never really know until you walk in those shoes. And there's a very powerful, self-righteous, um, superiority complex spiritual perspective that all, all you have to be is holier than thou, that you come from the light and that everything else is just evil and you are just going to be in alignment with God and make sure that you don't get involved in anything else and that's it. Well, that is baloney, absolute baloney because that is not reality. That is an ideology that gets propagated by a particular God entity who is imposing its spiritual practices and doctrines onto this reality, into the human psyche. It is not the true creator of this universe because that other perspective is completely judgmental. 
and self-righteous. Mm -hmm. And the true creator of this universe is not like that. Not like that at all. There is no person from the light that is better than the person from the darkness. Light and dark are alter egos of one another. We're in a universe of contrasting expressions. That is light. That's what vibration is. It, you bounce from one expression to the other expression. That's vibration. That's how light is created. That's how sound is created. That's how frequency is created. We're in a universe of contrasting expressions. And so if we live in denial of our darker aspects, of our shadow selves, we are propagating an internal division. We will remain internally divided. And I've taken those journeys through those self-righteous realms of light. Many of us have. You'd be, excuse me, you'd be surprised how many people I'm talking to who are waking up and realizing this self-righteous, positive, white love and light only solution. Mm -hmm. Because that's only half the picture. That's only half of what we are. And when we tra transcend that as well, so that's a limiting paradigm. Positive only plus positive is one side of energy. What about the negative charge of energy? What about the other expression? And what we need to do is embrace both sides, embrace our light and our dark. And that allows us to transcend that paradigm, that place of, of alter egos, of contrasting expressions in that manner. And we integrate everything back into a place of oneness and harmony. Now, now, when I say oneness, I don't mean oneness in the, in, the start, in, in, you know, in the perspective of collective hive mind oneness. We've got to be really careful of those because there's plenty of that going on too. So when I talk about oneness, it's the understanding cohesive, you know, that, that, that glue that binds life together called unconditional love and living in harmony with, with, all the, uh, with all life around us. That's the type of oneness I'm talking about. So you believe that, uh, it, it, so you, you don't subscribe to the idea that there is one collective consciousness, it, 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 you, so it's, it's, you do believe that we are all individual, is that correct? Ab Individuals? Absolutely. We are, we are all together. individuals. Yes, we are okay. co-creating together. Now, we are co-creating with the creator of this universe because, you know, we get into the really big stuff now, okay? The really big mm -hmm. stuff, because this is... This is the background picture to these, all these ideologies that are being presented to us on, on the planet. This is where we go, what is God? This is where we go, yeah. who and what is God? Who and what are we? Who is the creator of this universe? Who's the, who's the God that's behind the religions? Who's the God that's behind all the spiritual ideologies that have been propagated on the planet? You know, and I want people to know that I didn't get this from ETs. This, this knowing yeah. I have is me reintegrating and being once again my soul, my heart-soul essence, and, and traveling this universe with my heart-soul essence. Because soul, to me, my definition of soul is much, much higher and much, much greater to other people's definition of soul. For example, you get books that talk about how uh, grey races harvest souls, that they take souls from one body and they can put it into another. Well, that's not soul mm -hmm. to me. That's just a form of spirit, you know, that they get mm -hmm. access to. My soul is the highest expression of me in this universe. It's a part of me that's completely one with God. That's sanctified. That's totally untouchable. I mean, there's so many level, levels and layers before you get to the aspect of spirit that these beings are talking to. There's, there's two great voids in the universe between my soul and the, um, the aspect of spirit that these people are referring to. So, again, my definition of soul is way up there. It's at the top of the universe. So I just want to clarify that. And when we get to the understanding that we exist beyond this universe, so we exist beyond light, because the moment you say you are only light, and when I say we exist beyond light, I don't mean evil and darkness, okay? I mean beyond... Mm -hmm. The, the, the version of light I'm talking about is, is an integrated version of what we know as dark and light. So when we talk about the, the light that manifests this universe, that is the expression of, of God, the creator of this universe, that we exist beyond that. Because the, if you think light is all there is, you've instantly put a finite, you put a ceiling on life. And life is infinite. And we are infinite. You know, and when I, I remember the time when I entered this universe and became one with God. And, and this 
and created what we call soul, that aspect of me that merged and that unified love and an expression of beingness in this universe of the, the, the universal creator and me is soul. That's what we call soul. And so therefore the highest aspect of me in this universe is soul and we exist beyond it and I'm infinite as a being. We are all infinite. This is what they don't want you to know. This is the, this is the great part of us that they don't want you to know because this is the all empowering, you know, um, whammy. This is the checkmate move because the moment you realize you are infinite, it's okay, well I'm infinite. That means I've never been created. That means I have always existed. That means there's no beginning to me, there's no end to me. I always have been, I always will be. That's infinite. Then you have this other idea of a God entity that claims to be the creator and ruler of all that is and all that exists and says that we are bits or cells of that collective consciousness, that it created us, oh, but we are eternal from this moment on. Well, that's not infinite. Okay? This is a completely different ideology and this is what I, I say to people is the checkmate move. The moment you realize you're infinite, your awareness goes into that infinite nature within yourself, into your infinite beingness and you see from that vantage point the lies, the deception, this, this God entity whose ego is so out of control claiming to be the creator of all that is and all that exists and, in every level of life, everywhere. That's egoic insanity. And, you know, I, I, I was taken to the Vatican. I, I had this debate with the cardinals there, you know, with two cardinals and two others. There was four of them all together. And I had this debate and they hammered me so hard. They go, your arrogance, your, you, you know, the, your, you, your rudeness, your arrogance to think that you are greater than God, you know? And it was just amazing. And I said, the, the height of the arrogance and the egoic insanity of your God to, to claim to be the creator of everything, one being. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just insane. <laughs> you know, so we, we get to this place of really understanding the machinations of the, the, the fundamental ethos in these spiritual concepts that are being propagated, that are being shoved and rammed in, and imposed into the psyche of humanity and it has been like this for thousands of years and that's why we contracted this God entity because it's the best. You know, we wanted the best. We needed the, the greatest challenges and the greatest adversity we could have ever hoped for and the reason we did that is when you want um, a job done and you get the best contractor you can, it means your end result is going to be the best. So therefore, for us to become the best that we could become, we needed the best challenges that could ever be imposed upon us. And we got the best. And the way the human psyche has been shrouded, has been clouded, has been fogged, has been entranced, I call it the enchanted entrapment of humanity. And it's a brilliant job. It really is. But also know that you have everything within you to transcend that and to embrace it, not to be bitter towards it, but embrace it with love and gratitude. And then you stand in your integrity in this amazing place within yourself that I did it, I made it. You know, it's a, such a good feeling. And then we get to that place where, all right, so now I have an obligation and responsibility to help everyone else. So we turn back around and we come back into the matrix and we do the best we can because each one of us has our own little fundamental purpose and in what we specialize in to help with a situation. Wow, fabulous information, really, George. I, I'm, I'm very thankful for uh, your insight on all these things. Um, Sean Cohen in uh, the chat room is asking about death. Uh, where do you see, um, you know, the actual afterlife being? Um, where do you think people go after their death? People are going to various different places. It's a bit like Grand Central Station, so. You know, if you, if you came from Arcturus and you incarnated, and even then, I mean, it doesn't mean you go back to Arcturus. You know, for some people they do, some beings do. 
And, um, and then Arturus has got all these different dimensional levels going on, so it depends on what level you came from. So, so let's say as an example, a person came from the fourth dimension within Arturus and their, their journey, because we're not all journeying, we didn't all enter the universe at the same time. So they're still in the downward spiral of, of the journey. So they're heading towards the real deep, darker um, vibrations within the universe. So they come here from the fourth dimension, have this incredible experience here, turn into someone really nasty throughout their lifetime. And then after their, their incarnation, they will go through the life uh, re-evaluation and then with their soul, because of the law of attraction, their soul will be gravitating them towards either a lower um, dimensional realm within the Arcturus system again or somewhere else. It all depends on the individual's soul requirements because the way this um, universe is set up again is through every experience that we have and every experience is co-created. You know, everything that we do, everything that we be, everything that we see is a co-created experience in this universe. And therefore, um, each experience, the, the, the wisdom that we cultivate from each of these experiences is food for the soul and the soul grows. So when, uh, I'll just backpedal just a moment to, to give a background understanding of what I'm getting at is when we entered this universe and we initially experienced ourselves as light, um, how, how, ask me that in a moment, okay, about experiencing ourselves as light for the first time because I really want to explain that. And then we, we came into um, uh, this unified expression with the creator and we created what's called soul. That was like a seed of universal consciousness that was planted within us. And every, every experience we had from that moment on, so when we, our soul decided to venture further into the universe and express itself, every single experience and the wisdom gained from that experience gets fed back to the soul and it's food and water, it nourishes the soul and the soul grows. And then we go to another reality, we have another experience and, and the wisdom from those experiences feed the soul again and the soul grows even more. So this is why we are creators in the making because we're learning everything there is to learn about light. And we go through all the realities and the domains within this universe. We co-create, it's been such an amazing journey. And so when somebody goes into, let's say, the fourth dimension and they're having uh, an extraterrestrial, you know, UFOs and, you know, really high-tech crystalline cities and all that sort of business, um, in the fourth dimension in the universe, in Arcturus, for example, because that, that's everywhere in, in the fourth dimension, is that sort of technology, um, and they come to the Earth and then they have these experiences, well, what their soul requires next is up to the individual being. So they may not go back to Arcturus. They might go to a lower dimension, like the third dimension in Arcturus, or they might go to a different star system altogether or a different galaxy. They might even go out of this galaxy and go to somewhere else and then come back in later on. So it, it's different for everybody. We didn't all enter the universe at the same time. But there is a but there. Those of us who are on Earth at this time now and those of us who know we are completing this journey through the universe and through the universal matrix. We were the first group that entered the universe. So we are known as the ancients and we are also known as the way showers. We're the ones that had the courage and the bravery to enter, to co-create, manage and participate in this road to compression, to enter the galaxy, to enter the solar system, to enter this planetary system and to enter into human form. We're the ones that gave everything else up. You know, all our empires, all our, you know, massive creations, you know, we didn't like give them up as in um, someone else owns them. It, it's not like that. We are still the creators. It's our consciousness that makes those realities up. So we're still responsible for them. But what we gave up was the cosmic ego in holding the positions of power uh, in a sense, to let go of all that, like an equivalent in this world is to let go of all your wealth and strip yourself away and just go back to just being you. Strip all your wealth in the way of finance, your, your, the way you identify you through yourself, through your jobs, through your groups, through you know, all the way we externally identify ourselves. You give that all away and all that's left is you, which is really quite frightening because you just left there 
stripped bare naked, standing, bearing your heart and soul to the world, it's quite a, it's quite a um, confronting situation. And this is what we've done, cosmically speaking. And so we've have, had everything stripped away from us, incarnated into human form, and became totally vulnerable to these forces of limitation. And that's why we are the way showers. So our setup, our set of circumstances is slightly different because where, where I'm heading after this, um, I'm not going to experience death. This time we're going to experience intention where we transcend, transform and metamorphosize into the sum total of our experiences. So people who are coming here um, and having their incarnational experiences, um, some of them are not ready to complete that journey. So again, it's a case-by-case -case set of circumstances where someone comes from and when they die or pass over um, and finish with their journey here on Earth, where they go to next is individual for each person. Now there are group group areas where if someone has come to this planet and has given themselves over to a religious ideology so vehemently that that is where they are heading after they pass, so the spirit will leave the body and then the deity that they have been worshipping, or shall I say feeding, um, will turn up or one of the representatives of that deity will turn up and take them to the heavenly realm that the God entity that's behind these religious ideologies has created for them. Because this is where we get into the other side of the, the story of who this God entity is and why it's doing what it's doing because it's trying to replicate the universe. So some people get um, taken into the synthetic universe and go into the heavenly realms of the synthetic universe where they experience the angelical hierarchies, the ascended masters and all that sort of um, malarkey to do with that energy, those hierarchies. Earlier, George, you mentioned that everyone is an ET. Now, th there are a, there, there's a lot of different races and ethnicities on this planet. Are they all from different star families? Uh, yes, they are. The only original um, inhabitants of the planet that went through the process of evolution in this world are the Australian Aborigines. And that's why they have a different chromosome set up to everybody else on the planet. And everyone else has oh. come from off-world. Um, now, the spirits incarnated into, you know, we're just talking the genetic lineage now, okay? So don't forget there's a lot of um, uh, people like us who have had lives as Australian Aborigines, American Indians, you know, as a lot of the uh, indigenous peoples of, of this world that we call indigenous. Um, it's just they've been here on the planet a lot longer. So from the Australian Aborigines came the American Indians, came the Africans, came the, you know, they're the first groups that were incarnated or, um, you know, from out there onto this world because to, excuse me, for the, um, what are the 12 tribes of Israel, okay, and I'm going to give you my take on that, is there's 12 mm -hmm. main genetic groupings, cosmically speaking, that because there's so many different races out there, we had to break it down. And I'm saying we because I'm part of that management crew. We all are. We just don't know that about ourselves just yet. I do. I know it about myself. Many others know it about themselves. So I'm speaking in the first person here because we're just part of that, you know. So what we needed to do was to create 12 main groupings, genetic groupings, representations, to, to get it down to what, what is commonly known as 12 tribes, of, of Israel, which is Ra is God um, in ancient terminology. Um, it's understanding about the sun and who the consciousness of the sun is. We'll get into that in a minute because that's really, really profound when you know who the sun is mm -hmm. uh, and you know who the earth is, my goodness. Um, when that realization occurs, have a box of tissues with you. Um, and when um, we needed to break it down to 12 main genetic groupings, to bring, it, bring these main genetic groupings here to the Earth to infuse those um, extraterrestrial lineages with the humanoid lineage that was already on the planet. So for extraterrestrial races to anchor their genetic lineage into the Earth plane, it was required to blend the genetics with the Australian Aboriginal, with the original humanoid path of evolution. So there is truth to that, but it's only a part truth. Um, 
of, of the evolutionary path on this planet. And that helped to anchor, and that's why every, everybody on this planet has Australian Aboriginal genetics in them. And I know some white supremacists will be horrified at that, but welcome to reality. <laughs> Uh, you said you're going to uh, get back to the consciousness of, of the, the sun. Okay, the consciousness of the sun. Every experience we have in this universe, again, is a co-created experience. So we make the agreements from the high levels before we go into the experience and live the experience. So that means that we are making agreements with beings prior to us co-creating the realities and going and projecting an aspect of us inside of those realities to experience them firsthand, to experience our, co mm -hmm. our co-creations, which means we know who they are, who these beings are. And the other thing is, if you are incarnate onto a planetary body, it means you're having a very deep and intimate relationship with the consciousness of that planet. In, in other words, with the being who is the planet. I mean... Think of how profoundly deep that relationship must be, that, that you are able and invited and, and agreed upon that you would enter into its planetary embodiment and be inside. It's like someone entering into your body. You know, you know who's going to go inside of your body and be within you. you, you it, it's like, how would you like to be treated as a, as a person, as a being? So we, otherwise we're imposing. If we, if we don't have this agreement, then we're just outright imposing. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to impose myself onto someone else just willy-nilly. It's, it's rude. It's not, it's not the done thing. Um, but even, even if someone does come here and, and, and it looks like they're imposing, from a higher level, the sole agreement was always going to be that they were coming, going to come and do this anyway. So there's nothing outside of co-created agreements, nothing. Um, so when we realize that we are having this deep and intimate relationship with this incredible planet we call Mother Earth, the question is, who is she? And then we realize we're inside the solar embodiment, or we're inside, incarnated inside the, the embodiment of a star system. So who is this star system? And we're also incarnate inside a galactic system. So who is the galaxy? And, and these are the questions to ask, and I'll tell you why it's so important to know the answers to these questions. This is our immediate cosmic environment. This is our local neighborhood. If, if you don't know where you are in the universe, then you don't really know what's going know what on in life. Right? You, you don't. You don't know what's going on in life because you don't even know where you are. You don't even know who this planet is you're incarnated upon. You know, you think you know. And I'm not trying to be arrogant here. It's a bit of, I'm just, you know, grabbing you by the scruff of the shirt a bit and saying, hey, let's have a bit of a wake-up moment here. You yeah, know, because everyone's walking around with these high-end spiritual concepts, they're living this really high-end intellectual version of spirituality. And they become very self-righteous. I did. I was there. I was very self-righteous, very judgmental. And I didn't know who my immediate... Um, my, my immediate cosmic surroundings were, and I didn't even know who this incredible woman is that I'm incarnated upon. This woman that sacrificed more than anyone, you know, in, in the universe. That is the question. And you realize just how here we have a woman that's, that's bound in shackles and chains with all these artificial ley line grids, and she's been tortured and plundered and pillaged and raped, era after era. So we, as a humanity, can have this incredible experience. You know, you want to know, you want to know someone who has given of themselves? No one has given of themselves as much as this great woman we call Mother Earth is. And, that, and who she is, is the incarnation, the planetary incarnation of the divine mother, the divine feminine expression of the consciousness of the universal creator. We are universal embryos in the planetary womb of the divine mother. And when you go into your heart, into your heart, beneath these heart chakra stuff of the, of the chakras, when you go into your heart of hearts, into your heart soul essence, that's the first place you go is straight into the heart of Mother Earth after that because this is your immediate connection. And then you go to the heart of Father Son 
and the Son is the divine masculine expression of the universal creator. And what's inside the earth is a female version of the Son, and they're twin flames. Christ's consciousness is not exclusively a male thing. Christ's consciousness is androgynous. It's what our souls are made of. And it's that unified expression of us and the Creator. And when we realize that the Christ in the feminine was the greater sacrifice rather than the Christ in the masculine, we begin to realize just how much we've been duped. Now, when we get told that resurrection is something that we must do outside of ourselves and follow a Christ male figure outside of ourselves rather than reawakening and reconnecting with the divine feminine Christ energy within us first so that we can rebalance between the masculine Christ and the feminine Christ within each and every one of us, then we can really balance our masculine and feminine within. I mean, every woman knows what I'm talking about. How, you know, mm. I, I am trying so hard to understand the feminine principle, to awaken the feminine within me, because she has been quashed, she has been downtrodden and raped and pillaged and belittled and, oh my goodness. And when we realise that we all have this going on within each and every one of us, you know, the, the, the pathway to true resurrection, first we must resurrect the divine feminine within each and every one of us. Absolutely. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, I think that we had lost Greg <laughs> for a second there. Yep. Um, <laughs> are you there? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. No, that's fine. Uh, I seen you disappear, and I just wanted to make sure you were able to, you know, communicate with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, George, it seems like there's a lot of duality everywhere. And with that in mind, it seems like a lot of people think that reptilians are all bad, but I disagree. What do you think? Yeah, I disagree. I think um, that's racism, outright racism, mm -hmm. to say that all reptilians are evil. Um, birds are part of the reptilian family, even though the, the, it appears that the serpent tribes and the bird tribes are at war with one another and they're separate. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, birds are raptors. They originate from the um, a draconian family. And, uh, and when we realise the roots and the heritage of the bird beings and the reptilian beings, they go back to the draconian beings. Um, that's their, their genetic lineage. And when we go, mm -hmm. if you really want to go into the history of genetic lineage in the cosmos, then you have to go right back to the insect beings because they were here before anybody. And uh, there's good and bad in every race. And so what's happening on this planet at the moment to drive a particular agenda, um, in, you need to have your boogeyman, just like in terrorism, right? You've got the bad guy. So then the, the good guys can come along and make themselves look like the good guys. So the modern day version of the devil are the reptilians. Um, someone even made me out to be a reptilian. <laughs> they made a when I came out and started sharing all this information. Um, somebody went to all the trouble to take a pixelated video um, Skype conversation I had with uh, in my early days when I had really bad internet connection, and um, and insert all these individual pixels to make me look like I'm a reptilian. It was a oh, really no. good job, but. <laughs> it's amazing how many people have fallen for it. It just goes to show you how powerful the psyche is because I'm no more reptilian than you are, Craig, or anyone else listening uh -huh. to this. I've, we've all been reptilian. We all have aspects of us right now that are reptilian. You look at it, we have the, the reptilian brain. The, the, you know, exactly. So we have to have some kind of aspect to it, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's a, there's a huge. We our genetic makeup is the makeup of every single race that exists. We are a um, a sum of all life, and we are a sum genetically of all life as well. And when we realise about ourselves, and we have a disdain or a hatred for a particular race, we are then having a hatred and a disdain for a part of us within ourselves. And that creates internal division. And that will keep you bound in the matrix. So really be careful of that. We need to embrace all life on all levels, no matter what. No mm -hmm. exception. Mm -hmm. 
If you want, if you want to know what unconditional love is, that's it. You love mm -hmm. all life on all levels, no exception, no matter what. No matter how they've raped you, no matter how they've tortured you, because this is what I've learned to do. I've been raped, I've been tortured in this life, let alone previous lives. I've been heinously tortured in this life by various groups, really, really awful stuff. And I've learned that if I'm going to be free from all of that, I need to love them. And that has what's liberated me. That's beautiful. Um, I, I have one quick question for you, and then I was hoping, um, I guess we can go ahead and start getting some other callers um, in here. But one question that I, I have for you, um, it's, it's about the Zodiac. And I would like to know if your galactic family or you personally um, have uh, some understanding of how much influence and importance the Zodiac um, has not only on humanity, but how far does that reach out? Does, is that is that specifically was that specifically designed for for us here on this planet, or does that also affect other um, civilizations or, or or galactic you know um, uh, races out there? I mean, how far does that influence travel? Yeah, it's um, it's a really interesting dynamic because when you're looking at the twelve signs of the zodiac, they come into alignment. Uh, resonant alignment with the, they are resonant alignments with each of the 12 strands of DNA we, we originally began with. And uh, and they're also in alignment with the 12 different um, groups of genetic lineages that I spoke of earlier. And they're also in alignment with the 12 main, excuse me, archetypal personalities of the universal creator, which we all carry within us. So when we can understand the combination of all those together, and that the focus of compression, of bringing everything down into the earth plane, excuse me, and bringing it into us as individuals. So it's, it's a concentration of energy focused. So you've got 12 rays of energy, if you want to put it that way, for, for want of a better expression. And they're all coming in to us, both planetary and individually. And we're all being affected because we're taking everything that was out there and, and we, we got everything into 12 main groupings. And then all the dynamics, all the wars, all the conflicts, all the love, all the cooperation, every single aspect of everything that we've been and everything that we've seen and everything that we've done out there, we are then taking that and focusing it into a single focal point. And that's the way this whole place has been set up. So we can do that. And when we wake up and realize that we are the main focus here, not from egoic circumstances, right? Not from a place mm -hmm. of ego, but from a place of bravery, from a place of courage, from a place of being a way shower, from a place of breaking new frontiers, of being the first to amalgamate, to integrate everything back into one single expression, to find that place of harmony and balance within ourselves. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And when you go to when you go to other star systems, for example, they have their own version of Zodiac. Because when you incarnate into a planetary system around Cirrus, when you look out from Cirrus and you see the different planets um, that are around you and the different star systems that are interacting and having a relationship, because remember stars are people, they're us. Okay? So if you treat planets and stars as people, the, you, you, whole, you go to a whole new understanding of life in the universe. You really do. Galaxies are people. Just treat everything as people. Trees are people. Tr treat everything as a person, as a living, breathing, conscious being, because everything is, no matter how inanimate an object, even your keyboard and mouse for your computer, it's living consciousness. Everything is living. And uh, when we can understand that the whole, our whole relationship with life and the way we interact with life changes. And when we realize that planets are stars and they have personalities and they fight, some stars get on really well with each other, some have issues with one another. You know, we, 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 we do have this issue of a brown dwarf star, failed star, which is insanely jealous of our sun, which I don't see sweeping through in the next few weeks. <laughs> There'd be a lot more dramatic changes if that was the case. 
Um, but there is something going on. I've experienced that entity myself personally, and that that's still part of the equation here. It still does want to come through when it needs to and, and, and steal the thunder from our son because our son made it and became this brilliant star and this other entity is insanely jealous of it and uh, is doing its best to totally sabotage what's going on here. So there, there is a bit of a byplay going on, cosmically speaking, because we have personalities involved. Stars, believe it or not, have egos and, um, and planets have egos. Um, all extraterrestrial races have egos. God entities have egos. You know, otherwise the God of religion would not be soliciting worship via the molestation of the of the spiritual human. You know, wow. let's just get real yeah. about this. Now we're we're going to bring a caller in here. We have area code two six seven. I believe that's Andrew. Andrew, are you there? Yes, I am. How you doing? <laughs> How are you doing, hey, tonight, brother? Hey, um, I compiled a list of things here, and if you and Kendra don't want to go through all of them and want to go to the next caller, I'll be happy to pay the $100 fee that George charges for a session just to go over everything. But um, I do have some things I want to talk about here. Awesome. Okay, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> okay. I've got a list of callers here, too, so you, you try, try to all pick right. out the best of the best. Okay, here it is. Um, George, you've actually opened up a can of worms. You may not realize it, but a lot of things people think they know, you've kind of contradicted. Here's my list of things. Number one, everyone says the reptilians come from the lower fourth dimension of consciousness. You say they come from the second dimension of consciousness. You say there are 12 dimensions of consciousness, but other people disagree. In particular, indigo child Matias de Stefano says there are 22 dimensions. Everyone says Nibiru is in a 3,600-year elliptical orbit in the solar system, but you say Nibiru is a twin planet of Earth that we cannot see because it orbits exactly opposite the sun. Most people say there is one type of... Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. You, you, hang on, can I just pull you up? You, you're firing one after the other, and you're saying that I said those things. I've never said that Nibiru is a twin planet of the Earth. I've never said sworn, that. I, I, I could have sworn I heard I've that. Always, I've honest. always said... Yeah, yeah, hang on. I've always said that Nibiru is a failed star and is a twin brother of the Sun. Okay? okay. Because we've got two males... It's, it's understanding the archetype, the higher archetypal energies of Enkian and Lil, of these, of these archetypal personalities that have been at play in the War of the Gods. Yeah, I've never said it was a twin of the Earth. So, okay, you know, I'm sorry about that. Um, and when I say there's, there's 12 dimensions, that's what I experienced personally. And when we look at the great arena that I talk about, the Universal Matrix, um, when people talk about fifth and sixth dimension, and they're talking about extraterrestrial races with UFOs and technologies, then they're not talking about the fifth dimension that I experienced. They're still talking about dimensional or, or levels of reality and frequencies within the great arena. See, when people experience the top of the fourth dimension, in my model, okay, in my model, just like my definition of soul is different to other people's definition of soul, so when I talk about the fourth, the top of the fourth dimension, people see that as the top of the universe. They see the great void as outside the universe. You know, and, and my version of the fifth dimension, they see that as outside the universe. And so we just got to understand that there's people that have different definitions about things. We're using labeling systems here. So um, it's unfair to, to categorize me in that way. I, I must make a stand here. Okay, I'm sorry if I took it out of context there. I just wanted to clarify exactly what a dimension of consciousness is. Um, and also um, about the reptilians, I remember you saying in that talk um, that you have on your website that they come from the second dimension of consciousness, as do the greys, and everybody says they come from the lower fourth. Um, why the contradiction? There, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's reptilian groups that come from the second, the third, and the fourth. And the particular group that the real nasty ones that are doing diabolical things to humanity come from the second dimension but impose themselves as though they are above us in the fourth dimension. That's the ideology that they propagate. Oh, okay. Um, and just uh, if it's okay with you, I just wanted to quickly go over. You're the only person I know of that talks about the Orion Nordics and likewise you're the only person who says that there are two types of Anunnaki, real and false Anunnaki. Um, what's your uh, comments on those things that I've noticed? that you discussed. Yeah, the, 
for me there are two types of Anunnaki. There is a, an Anunnaki group that is really malevolent, um, that don't have our best interests at heart. And then there is a, a group of Anunnaki, um, and that's the only label I've got for them at this stage, okay, because it's what people can relate to. It's understanding who is Arn, okay, and the, the peoples of, the, of Arn is what the word Anunnaki means. And who is Arn? Who is Arn the cosmic manifestation of? Who is Arnu? The cosmic manifestation of. You know, who is that entity? Who is Akhenaten? Who, who are these beings? You know, Akhenaten has been painted to be someone totally evil, the usurper of the divine feminine who created a dogmatic patriarchal religion. You know, what a freaking lie. Come on. That guy... All that guy ever did was want you to understand who the consciousness of the sun is and was all about self-empowerment and tried to get people to break away from the priestly caste. It's the priestly caste that are the poison here on this planet. They're the, they're the earthly ambassadors and representatives for this God entity who, you know, who's suffering egoic insanity. It's, there's so much twists down through the ages. You know, when you, when you know that the reality is heading in a particular way and you get the opportunity to scribe stone and rewrite history that's going to favour you thousands of years down the track, you're going to do it if you're a conqueror, if, you, if you're a malevolent being. And this is what, ha what has happened. We just read scribes of stones. We're just reading other people's opinions. But when you look at the facts of, of Akhenaten trying to not create a cult of the sun, but people to reconnect with the consciousness of the sun to make them realize that they are incarnate in a star system of, of the consciousness of who that being is and with mother earth i mean he treated nefertiti like he he had so much reverence for her you know so who are these beings and you get to realize that they are the cosmic um incarnations of some very powerful and important consciousnesses from much higher up in the universe and so there's there's a lot of disinformation on the planet. And I, my suggestion is you can read what you want and you can believe what you want. Okay? It's totally up to you. But I don't do that. I, I, I'm not a reader. I'm an experiential person. And I'm going to go into my heart. I'm going to go into my true third eye, the transpersonal self, my heart within me. And yet... When you first go in there, you might make the odd mistake because you haven't ridden that bike for a long time and you fall off it a few times. And that's all right. Just don't be hard on yourself and don't be hard on others that do fall off. But when you stay with it, you stick with it, something emerges out of you. This, this, this incredible knowledge, this incredible wisdom, this knowing about life on this planet, this knowing about the way things did happen compared to what we're being told by others happened. And it's really important that you do that for yourself. And I recommend that to everybody because there's so many twists and turns. And yes, I feel that when we understand who Anu is, when we understand the connection of the genetic creation of our heart, the way our heart pumps, pounds with a golden ratio, the way it's designed to disseminate our light into the world, resonantly speaking, and that creation was by a being called Anu, a supreme geneticist in the cosmic arena, far out, you know. You start breaking into this amazing territory. So <laughs> take a step back from the drama and, and have, a, have a look at what's really going on here. That's, that's my recommendation. Okay. Thanks. And Andrew, um, we, have to, we have to move on to another caller okay. there, brother. That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Talk, talk to you later. I'm it's your show. Do what you want. <laughs> All right. No, that was, that was all, man. That was, Hey, Greg, Greg, they were good questions, and yeah. I like the challenge. I'm really up for it, so it's good stuff. Don't, okay. don't take me wrong. I'm a man of great passion. I live my passion. I live, I live my, I really do, and my expression is intense because I'm living my passion. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm just really standing firm, and that man had every right to ask those questions because, um, you know, there's things I've said in the past which I don't agree with now like we all have in life. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. fine for people to pull me up on anything. Okay. You're welcome, George. Well, thank you.
Thanks for calling in, brother. Yeah, maybe I'll schedule a session with George. All right. Thank you. Take care now. Thank you. All right. Later. All right. So uh, next up on the list, we have area code 321. You're live on the air on N5D Radio with Greg Kendra and George Cabasilis. Can we get can can we get your name? Yes, my name is Patricia. Hi, George. Hi, Patricia. How are you going? Oh, I'm just I'm so happy to speak to you. Um, I've been following you for quite a long time, and um, I am still struggling with the the whole chakra thing. I never mm. really identified with the chakras. And I have been asking various people and trying to tap into my own energy. And I was uh, recently explained to me that we need the chakras in this third dimensional paradigm. And I still don't, do not identify with the chakras. And I was wondering about your past um, comments regarding the removal of the chakras and what your thoughts are on that now. Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. I'm actually writing a course about all of that, and uh, it's nearly finished. And it's important for us not to see the chakras as some disease we need to rip out um, because then we're creating an internal division. Uh, we need to end our relationship with the chakras, and we do that through love and gratitude um, because chakras are a living entity, uh, they're not a part of my natural makeup. They, you might think, or what, I know you don't because you've never identified with them. And, you know, it's, it's really amazing for those of us who have had to live through this new age revolution, um, how chakras have played such a big role in it. And I could never use them. I could never meditate with them. I could never identify myself through them. I was always manipulated through them. There were some beings that helped me through them um, to help maintain a balance within my beingness when other beings took things too far. Um, they are a, a cosmic software program that has been um, implanted into the human construct. And the reason we wanted that to happen, and again, I'm going to that place of beyond pain, uh, blame and gain, uh, pain and blame, um, we wanted this. I wanted to incarnate into an embodiment with a shark system because I wanted to be challenged by it. And the, the version of enlightenment, the light frequencies, the flavor of light frequencies that belong to the chakra system, that are made up of the chakra system and um, calibrate people to via the chakra system are all of the synthetic universe. They're synthetic light energies. And you will only know, people would go, oh, oh, what a load of bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, but that's always said by people who have not experienced their heart soul essence beyond the chakra system. So I can't help those people to the degree I would like to because it's up to them to take it to the next step, the next level. Um, now, again... It's something not to be feared. I must reiterate this. Do not fear the shark system. It's something that we need to embrace and be grateful for. And if people want to go through that process of that version of enlightenment, of the combination of the chakras and the kundalini, hitting the pineal gland and, and, and experiencing that mind enlightenment, that version of enlightenment through the mind, that's entirely up to them. I've already done that, been there, done that. Um, no, thank you, that's not for me anymore. And I find that the majority of people who don't relate to their chakras have also been there and done that, and they innately, subconsciously, intuitively, instinctively know that this time they're not to get involved with that process, that they you know, they just buy their time until they can transcend beyond the need for these uh, energetic systems. Because we get told that you can't live without chakras, you'll die, you know? <laughs> And that's just a lie. There's plenty of us that are living without chakras and more peaceful, happier, vibrant, powerful, um, steady within ourselves, peace within ourselves, emotional roller coaster we don't have anymore. We're thriving without them happily and joyfully, thank you very much. And people have been coerced into believing that we can't live without them. And that's just a lie. That's the program of dependency that is created around these spiritual practices by these God entities and their 
ambassadors called angels and ascended masters. You know, we, we really need to be careful what we're getting involved in here and wake up out of that trance because those chakras appeal to our cosmic ego. You know, we've got to get past just the earthly ego. We've got to realize we also have a cosmic ego. So please realize you have a cosmic ego. And, and that's what these programs are appealing to. The new technologies coming in are appealing to that. So just getting back before I go off on that tangent, I just want to say chakras, do not fear them. Embrace them. Be grateful for them. And it's about ending our relationship with them. And, uh, and that's how we move beyond them and let them go. And I, I embrace them. I merge them all into a single sphere of energy and then I embrace them into my heart. That's how I move beyond them. All right. Thanks so okay. much for calling in, Patricia. Um, could, I, could I have a little follow-up to that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. Sorry about that. Um, I, I just I don't want to take up other callers' times, but um, in, in, in the process, and, and I do uh, try my best to live from the heart. It's, it's difficult in this 3D, as everybody knows. Um, it, when we go through this process, what what will the body go through uh, with the ascension process? What will the body look like in the higher dimensions? What will it be consist of? That's that's what I wanted to ask. Okay. Well, um, currently all our aches and pains. I don't know about you guys, but there's a few. Um, that's part of the process because we're in an energetic matrix system. We're in a suit that is trying to um, uh, clamp us down, shackle us, chain us, you know, um, imprison us. And so we've got this energy that's trying to come out from within us and then we've got this other energy that's trying to force us down from outside of us. So that's part of the genius process of allowing these negative entities to come here and impose this matrix system on us because it helps to create more compression, you see, and we, um, being our earthly personalities of, I call it Little George, is is the one that's copying it, you know, because Big George is my higher self and my soul essence, is is loving it because I'm becoming what I need to become, and so Little George, um, or my earthly personality of me, is really finding it difficult and challenging because there's a lot of aches and pains involved in that process because. Basically, we've been squeezed like in the process of creating a diamond, you know, under great pressure. And it's forcing us back into ourselves, which is a wonderful thing too, to go within. So the more, um, what I found is the more my personality of George can release control and surrender of this life to the greater me, the part of me that made the decision to incarnate on earth to begin with, and the part of me that has is the composer of my journey and the orchestrator of my journey through this universe. When I release control of this life to my heart, soul, essence, then a lot of the pain is alleviated because it's my resistance, the resistance of my ego, of my, of my earthly personality, is what creates more of the pain. Um, so then what we're doing is we're bringing ourselves more into alignment with our heart, soul, essence. We begin to live our soul expression in this world. We begin to be really authentic, raw, raw and authentic. That's what I was trying to explain before. I'm not getting angry here. I'm passionate. I love, I'm passionate about life and I love being who I am. I'm more comfortable being me than I ever have in my whole life. And it's not because I'm in love with myself in an egoic sense. It's because I'm really proud to be me without the pride, being proud without the pride and really knowing it's like, to pull another biblical quote for me, which is so important, know thyself. Know thyself. And how many of you can say that you know yourselves? So important to trust in your own spirit. Believe in your own soul. Trust in your soul. You know, recede back into yourself. Fall back into yourself and trust that you, the greater part of you is there to embrace you, to protect you and to guide you. That's what we need to do. And that's when we move away from giving control of our, our minds, the way we think, the way we feel, and all these external influences coming in through the mind, through the literature, through all the stuff in the matrix. 
And because our lower um, ego resides in the mental framework. You see, there's no room for a self-righteous ego in the heart. There's no room for that. What happens is the, the self-righteous ego dissolves and then you have the personality interface of their authentic self come through. And I'm still in the process of achieving that. But I'm much further down the track with it than I was a few years ago. And anybody who's been watching me over these years and can see my journey over the last few years will see that. And I hope I'm a living example for people to have a look at and, and see the changes that have taken place in me. Thank you very much. Much love to you and Cynthia and Jason. And thank you, everybody, for your time, for allowing me to speak. Oh, thanks for calling in, Patricia. We appreciate it. Thanks, Patricia. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to the next caller. And let's see here. Area code 916, you're live on Inside D Radio. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to put that one back on hold there for a moment. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, let's move on here. Uh, okay, area code 646, you're live on N5D Radio. May we have your name? Hello, area code 646, you're live on the air. Hello. <laughs> Swing better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Greg, so who do we want to go ahead and... 805, let's go with. All right. All right. All right, 805, are you with us? I certainly am. <clears throat> Wonderful. Who are we speaking with tonight? You're speaking with Eagle. Eagle, how are you? Welcome uh, to Inside D Radio. Beg your pardon? Welcome to Inside D Radio, Eagle. Do you have a question for George? Uh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> Anytime you're ready, Eagle, he is waiting oh, for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, yeah, I was really, uh, he, he, George just spoke about chakras uh, a moment ago, and I was very uh, glad to hear him say what he said, because as he probably well knows, the Aboriginal people have held that position for a long time, and uh, Ramana Maharshi, uh, uh, he poused that position uh, at the same time that Ledbetter was installing them. So I found that, uh, that nice and refreshing. The question I have is I listened last night to Jay Wood and Widener, <clears throat> and he was talking about the Archons. And one of the things that uh, this is now my question um, he mentioned that <clears throat> Obama, uh, the thing that concerned Obama most right now was that the Archons were going to take him out. And, of course, if I were Obama in his shoes, uh, I would, uh, if they're going to get me anyway, I'd just spill the beans and be a knight in the night. Uh, George, are, are you still there? I don't see him. <laughs> I think we lost George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hang on. One second, Eagle. Yeah, um, can you bring him in on the call through Skype? Yeah. Uh, ha -ha. <laughs> All right, hold on here. Oh. Okay, he said he's back in the queue right now. So, uh, yeah, three. Uh, okay. <laughs> here he is. Okay, yeah, we got Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Not sure what happened, but you're back, George. Okay, hello. He, hello, yep. George. In, in, Eagle, you're probably going to have to uh, restate your, your question there. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, uh, that's, a, that's okay. Eagle doesn't have to. I, I was listening, and I uh, just want to say oh, how much okay. of an honor it is to Eagle to, um, to have heard you and to communicate with you. Thank you. Um, I, I feel that the old guard of the... Uh, of this ruling system on the planet is now surplus to requirements to the new guard. I feel sad for the old guard, and I feel that the, um, you know, I've extended my love and support to the old guard, 
um, in the way of there's a big part of me that doesn't like what they did um, to humanity. But on a much greater level, I'm fully appreciative of what they have done uh, for the challenges that they provided for the human race. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not going to judge them. <coughs> I'm not going to judge them. And that um, it's because in the higher realms we are together as one. And we are role-playing in this movie. We're different actors and we're, mm -hmm. we're role-playing different uh, positions. And so it's important for us, <coughs> those of us who have broken through that place of judgment um, and gone into the higher realms within ourselves, back into our hearts and back into that place where we are one with the Creator. That and Shakespeare we, is still writing the script. Yeah, and that we can say to these people that uh, we are not going to be a lynch mob. We're not interested in lynching them and that uh, we are ready to embrace them. So I think it's really important if we are to heal this planet and heal the wounds of humanity that we learn how to um, forgive and uh, and move on in life because the, the, the changes that are occurring now is this controlling faction is really factional and you've got one group that's moving in to get rid of the other group. And um, my main concern is what's coming in behind this next group. <laughs> um, that's the one I'm really concerned about because it's going to be all about love and light and it's going to be all about peace and unity, and for me that's the ultimate passive-aggressive program <coughs> of control. So that's the one for me to be very careful of. But this next group, this immediately next group, is the uh, the new face of the old guard. That's what I see going on, and there's a connection to the Vatican, and there's a connection would, to would the you, George, George, would you mind defining uh, your, your word God so that I'm clear? Yeah, my understanding of God is the creator of this universe. And another interpretation you can use, and when I say this universe, I don't mean the synthetic universe. That's just an energy that's imposing itself onto this planet. Mother Earth is part of the organic universe. It's an expression of the universal creator. So I, I, that's my interpretation of it. I don't see Mother Earth as an illusion. I don't see it as just a hologram to be devalued. I feel that it's something of utmost... Uh, importance that's going on here. But you don't give the same reverence, I hope, to the hollow moon. Uh, I don't see the moon as the divine feminine. I see the planet as the divine feminine. Right. I see that the moon is the great decoy in understanding who and what the divine feminine energy is. Because when we understand that Mother Earth is the divine feminine, um, then we understand our relationship with her because we're incarnated and we're connected our heart to her, her heart to her heart is completely one. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> do you wish to address at all my question about Obama? Yeah, um, I don't know directly about what's going to happen to President Obama, but I just know that the old guard is on its way out, and he's a part of the old guard. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, in a very precarious position right now, uh, as are, you know, Bush and Cheney and, and all the mentors and the whole hierarchy and the military-industrial complex is in a very difficult position right now. And, and I feel dark, for those guys. And the whole dark brotherhood. And the whole dark brotherhood. Because what's happening now is the false light brotherhood is moving in. I'm sorry, the what? The false light brotherhood is moving in. False light, yeah. And they're the ones that are going to look like the good guys getting rid of the bad guys. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but all of these false. All is equal. I'm sorry? All is, all is equal. Right. There's no polarity. No. Ultimately, there is none. It's just the experience of polarity in these in these realities that we've created together. Okay. All right. Thank you. Eagle. All right. Hi. Thanks Thank for calling you. in, Eagle. Yep. Thank you so much. Right. Bye bye. Now, I, I recently wrote an article called "Are You a Galactic Warrior?" and it compares the two groups of people. One is the love and lighters, who are all about love and light, and 
The other is the Galactic Warrior, who stands up for those who are unable to speak for themselves, and that includes people such as activists and, you know, those kind of people. Ultimately, it all boils down to love, but the Love and Letters argument is that if we put our energy into events such as activism, then we're empowering those actions. But the way I see it, the global elite are polluting our water, air, and food supplies, and if we don't do anything, then we're basically consenting to what they're doing. How do you see this? Yeah, it's a bit of a, 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 a paradoxical quandary, really. Um, I feel that it's a case-by-case -case situation where we want to help save the Earth, and at the same time, and we want to end the suffering on the Earth, we want to stop the pollution of the Earth, and at the same time, we need to look at the natural environment and say, well, is this the level of reality that Mother Earth wants to continue to have on her body as well? And the reason I bring this up is because in the natural kingdom, there's the, the, the energy of consumerism, where animals and plants and everything that lives in the natural con, um, kingdom needs to consume and take another life in order to survive. And that needed to be set up like that so we can go through this environment, we can be immersed and live in an environment of consumerism ourselves and we can become consumers as well. So the whole setup of this reality to me is changing and that includes the natural environment. So for me it'll depend on the individual if they want to, um, if that's their path to go into that cause and, and do something about it. But I feel it's very important to have in, included in the equation that when you look out across the planet and you see the natural environment the way it is now, that it too is metamorphosizing and it too is changing. But it's not going to stay the way it is. It can't. You know, it, it, it's a paradox. It's a, it's a contradiction, actually, to think that we're going to become enlightened and we're going to have these amazing technologies and we're going to go back to nature. But, but hang on a minute, look at the natural environment. It's full of death and destruction. That's not enlightenment. That's, that's a temporary setup. So Mother Earth doesn't want to have that all over her body anymore. She's done with that as well. So we need to take into consideration the natural environment in our thought processes, in our decision making as to which path that we're going to go forward in life. I've got friends who are environmental scientists. They work really hard at cleaning up the land, you know, and building sites and things. Someone's got to do it, mm -hmm. you know. So we need mm -hmm. we need to understand our relationship with Mother Earth and feel into what's best for us. If people want to become activists in certain areas, you know, I'm being an activist, but not directly on the streets in those sort of political movement activist type. I'm a different kind of activist in this world. And I think it's up to the individual to feel if that's their journey to get involved in those things or not. Mm -hmm. Now, are, are you familiar with astrology and how Pluto is in Capricorn right now? I'm not. Uh, I'm not an astrologer. I understand what astrology is, but I don't keep up with mm -hmm. astrology, if that makes sense. Well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll just give you a brief outline. Pluto went, went into Capricorn in 2008, and it stays there until 2023. The last time that Pluto was in Capricorn was during the French and American revolutions back in the 1700s. And this is the energy that it brings about, which is a, a revolution. And a lot of us, at least in the spiritual and metaphysical genre, we believe that, yeah, it's going to be a revolution, but it's going to be a peaceful revolution through noncompliance. And I, I just wanted to see what your take was on that. I feel the same. I feel that the more we go into our hearts and we stand in our own integrity and in our relationship and communication that we have with Mother Earth and Father Son and the greater galactic consciousness and the universal creator, when we understand that relationship and we stand in that and we be that, then we'll see that it's like watching two people just arguing over nothing and we won't want to be involved in that argument. You know, it'll be such um, when we see that the fight that is going on on the earth between different factions and groups that belong to this multi-dimensional intergalactic and cosmic cabal, 
run by this other god entity who's, who's the wannabe god, then we actually will just stand there and just let that be because the key to all of this of self-protection, of understanding how we can and not be in harm's way is because even though we can see them, it's, it's, let me give you an example. When we have a friend and they are involved in ballet, for example, they're immersed in the world of ballet. Uh, we're not, I'm not, okay? So I have no idea what's going on in the world of ballet because I'm not immersed in that reality. But it's a mm -hmm. world within our world. And right now, Mother Earth is in the process of changing and cleansing herself of all these other worlds that she no longer requires. So when we anchor our tree of life, the roots of our tree of life, we anchor the, the template of our consciousness into the new consciousness that is birthing on this planet, we then enter into a reality that is not the same as this other reality. Even though we can see it, we are existing side by side, we start experiencing a different world, a different reality. And the pronunciation or the substantiation of that new world that is birthing is getting stronger every day. And it will get one where we will be walking between the two worlds so, so distinctly. Like we already are walking between worlds, are we not? You know, we know that we're doing that because we have this new consciousness that's birthing within us, this, this fantastic new expression in the universe. And we're standing in that more and more every day. And so whatever the other beings in these other realities think they can do to us, they won't be able to affect us because we are in a different frequency which they can't reach. Mm. And that's not fantasy or a delusion or some sort of idea. If anybody has experienced multidimensional travel to the extent that I have, <laughs> you know, and experienced communicating with beings from other realms, any, anybody who does healings, anyone who communicates with other beings will tell you they can appear right in your room I've had American Indian um, elders manifest right in front of me in my lounge. You know? Sweet. This is what, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah, this That's is awesome. the sort of thing that can happen. And they can just move around this planet at will. They can, you know, and I call it bilocating, and we will all be able to do that as well. You know, we want, this is, you see, in 5D, in, in the fifth dimension, this is a great way to finish off too. In, in, in 5D, the, my 5D, the, the 5D, the, the way I understand 5D to be, okay? There is no technology. There is no technology. There is no illnesses. There is no disease. We don't live off light energy. You know, what we're becoming now in this new expression is we are light energy. We continually are that. There is no need for anything, want for anything, no lack of anything. It's all those qualities disappear because they are part of the universal matrix. And we are transcending that now. And we are, you know, when you hear about UFOs, free technology, free energy technology, when you hear about um, crystalline technologies and you hear about all this sorts of stuff, that all belongs to the great arena. For me, that is for me is all below the fifth dimension. Um, so very, very important to understand that um, the distinction that I make in the model that I present is is different to a lot of other people's models of of the way they think reality is. So yeah, we are becoming fifth dimensional beings more often, and we're going to go even beyond being fifth dimensional beings because what we are becoming is the sum total of our entire universal journey in one expression. And that means we're imploding all the dimensions into one expression. So I feel it's very profound. That's wonderful. I know we're getting close to uh, cutoff time here. <laughs> um, but I, I just have one question for you um, about the all of the different uh, ancient prophecies surrounding the topic of end of days or end of times or the new age. I mean, and these are all coming from cultures all around the world. Um, the Hopi Indian, uh, they, they're 
prophecy of the, the blue kachina, the red kachina. I mean, it's actually a very beautiful prophecy in my, you know, honest opinion. But in your opinion, do any of these prophecies at all uh, come close to, to, uh, to, to what you feel in your, in, in your own opinion? You know, I mean, do, do they resonate with you at all? Do you believe that there's any one in particular that might be closest to the truth? Well, the interesting thing about the blue and the uh, red kachina, um, do, do you sun gaze? Can I ask if you've ever looked at the sun recently? Yes, actually, I have. Yes, I do too. Did, okay, so has anybody noticed the hue, the color hues of the sun at the moment? So you've got your yellow, the traditional. Mm -hmm. Then inside of that's the blue. Then inside right. of that is the uh, magenta or the red. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I find it really fascinating when you understand the blue and the red kachinas, you know, and, and the prophecies. The sun is, is going through these changes itself of emanating these colours itself. Now, will the sun emanate those colours individually in the future? I don't really know. I'm speculating right now. Um, it's something to consider. Um, and will we have comets that fly past which will um, represent those colours, well, that's very much a possibility too. Um, every culture has got its prophecies, every single culture, and I feel there's an element of truth in every single one of them. It's just understanding how to interpret them. And I think each one of us will have our own individual interpretation of them. Uh, at the same time, there are the record keepers of each of these cultures, the elders, and it's really important to listen to what they have to say about their understanding of the prophecies as well. So I think all needs to be considered and nothing mm. should be dismissed outright because I think um, the more I, time I spend with Aboriginal cultures and um, the more I understand the way of thinking that I have forgotten. Because I go back into my lives when I was Aboriginal as well. And I feel that's important to reconnect with that aspect of us because the Aboriginal people are us. We are them. There, there is no differences between us. It's all perceived differences. And so, yeah, one, when we look at these prophecies, we're looking at our prophecies from, from another time, aren't we? Mm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and that's why I feel it's really important not to dismiss anything. And, yeah, there will be facets of these prophecies that do come to pass. I do feel that. Can you believe how quickly these two hours went? <laughs> we, do, we do transcend time when we see this is us moving into that other frequency. So we go out of linear time into no time, and that's why we experience this acceleration too, isn't it? We're having this massive acceleration taking place with this reality. Our atoms are starting to spin faster. Everything's moving faster. The Earth's revolving around the sun faster, proportionally spinning on its axis faster. Everything, the whole reality of the solar system is speeding up. It's really quite an amazing experience. It seems like every cell in our body would be vibrating faster too. Mm, exactly. If it, yeah, yeah, because it's the, 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 the vibration of our molecules determines the density of matter. See? And the, the mm -hmm. vibration of the molecule is determined by the spin of the atom, the rate of the spin of the atom. And that, that's how mm -hmm. when, when people move from one dimension to another, all they've been able to do is, is really get in touch with the rate of the spin of their atoms and they alter that rate of spin which alters the vibration of the molecules which alters their density. And that's how we were able to move stones in ancient times. You know, we got, we got connected consciously with a being that is that mineral kingdom, that mineral entity, and we, we connected with it and together we changed the rate of the spin of the atom which, which altered the, the vibrations of the molecules, which altered the density of matter. So we got the stones to levitate, working with the stones as one, beings together. The stones are our brothers and our sisters, and we work with mm -hmm. them, and that's how we built the monuments in ancient times. We just need to remember that. Mm. That, lo that would also explain how people can uh, just disappear from this dimension as, you know, and, 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 and why some people will get left behind. Yeah, and they will have to leave the planet eventually as well because the, the, the reality on this planet as we know it will cease to exist in the near future. I still stay with that. I haven't altered from that course whatsoever. Um, it'll get mm -hmm. to the point where the planet herself, just like us, will be a, a, a unified expression 
of, of the universal consciousness itself completely in one location. And that's what we are becoming and that's what the planet is becoming. So she will be seen upon a light, a brilliant light that has never been seen before, excuse me, in the universe. It will be a unique frequency, very unique. Wow. Great stuff. A wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful interview. Thank you so much, George. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to tell our listeners how they could get a hold of you? Well, I have the, the main website is ourjourneyhome.com.au. And uh, if you go to that website, you can get access to my radio program, Super Woo Radio. You get access to the book, Our Universal Journey, which is really a incredibly deep read. Um, there's an audio book version goes for 12 hours. There's an e-book version. Um, yeah, I recommend people, you know, if you want to really challenge your paradigms or you want a validation of the way you've already felt about things for a long time, check the book out and um, it's a lot of fun. It's a really deep read. It's not shallow and every page is loaded. So um, yeah, very, very happy with that book and we've got a course coming out soon as well. And, uh, and private sessions are available as well. So we're having a lot of fun with those, a lot of fantastic discussions that we're having with people, lots of fun. So thank you very much Wonderful. for inviting me onto the program. Can, can we absolutely. get you back as a guest? Oh, absolutely. Tomorrow? No. I'd be absolutely honoured. <laughs> well, I don't I'd, know about I'd you, Kendra, but I think we'll have a lot of questions left. Yep, me too. <laughs> yep, my list, I definitely didn't get through my list, so. <laughs> well, so yeah, definitely would be wonderful to, to uh, get you back, George. Oh, uh, honestly, I would be really honoured. I would love that. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, just send me an email. Let me know when. I'll be, I'll be happy to do we'll that. Will do. Well, thank you so much, my brother, for uh, spending two hours here with us on N5D Radio, and we look forward to having you back again real soon. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, Kendra. And please, everybody listening, believe in yourselves, trust in yourselves, and trust in that relationship you have in your heart with life and with each and every one of us, and shine your brilliant and beautiful light into this world, because that is what's going to heal this world, is you. Wonderful. Huh. Wonderful world, word stand with. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you. See you, everybody. All right. Take care, George. Bye-bye. Okay. So next Monday, I'm going to be out of town, but we have Graham Hancock tentatively scheduled for next Friday, September 6th, 2013. So stay tuned to N5D Radio for more info on that. And on behalf of my co-host, Kendra, this is Greg from N5D.com. Namaste, everyone.